you get 1 point by winning going first, 2 points by winning going second. The player who has the most points after 6 games wins the competition. This time I'm facing the top leaderboard player all of XC who placed 3rd in the Autumn 1v1 tournament of 2021 and personally knocked me out from the round 4, so winning this competition and getting a sweet revenge on him would be definitely nice. Olive decided to host even game numbers while leaving me the odd game numbers. So with me opening the competition, I decided to pick the Enchanted Lands World Domination. In the last competition playing with Risky Phil I was mostly picking popular 1v1 maps which were familiar to both of us, so this time I decided to change my strategy and go with the 1v1 community unfamiliar maps. Though the Enchanted Lands map wasn't very familiar for me as well, and before the competition I only did a couple of 1v1 games with myself, but besides what I also did is created the Enchanted Land Disconnection Sheet which showcases the territory's connection rating, the bigger number is, the higher connection rating it has, and usually in 1v1 games you would prefer picking lower rating number territories, who are the most disconnected besides some exceptions. If you're interested to find out how the map works, then I will leave the info in the description. Manual setup is that really matters a lot, picking territories in the right way could help you win a bunch of games, or lose a lot of them if you picking the territories wrong. As my first territory pick I decided to choose the most disconnected territory which is this exact territory over here. However with all of picking one of the territories in a small two territories continent, I realized that I made a mistake. The thing is that by picking the most disconnected territory of the map, I let all of pick the most disconnected territories in the two territory continents. So what I should have done instead is firstly picking the most disconnected territories in these two territory continents, to force all of picking the worst ones, and then only as the third territory pick selecting that most disconnected territory of the map. And after the game was ended Olive's thoughts were the same about that with him pointing out the same exact mistake I made as well. Olive then went with this territory which with a blizzard near became much more disconnected than in a regular game, and myself I went with the most disconnected territory in this continent which would block me the way the least. And Olive picked a territory near. And I picked the territory in this continent which I am considering being the best because it's the only one non-bordered territory, as you can see, the most left territory in this continent has a lower connection rating but it's a bordered territory which really blocks you the way. Olive then went with this very disconnected territory over here which I do not particularly like because it's a territory which completely blocks you the way from one side to another. So myself I rather prioritize picking this non-bordered territory which itself wouldn't block me in an important way. Then Olive picked that territory and then myself having these two territories selected and looking to the upper left continent, I realized that if I have to select one territory in this continent, then in this particular situation this one would be the best one to block myself the way the least. Anyway, we continued picking the territories and this how the board looked at the end, and that was the pre-game stage in which we have to deploy our troops. And usually both of the players are looking forward to put their troops to one big army if possible in world domination games. So what I saw is that if I add my army in that territory, then all of the territories of the map would be accessible to me except these four. So I tried thinking from Olive's perspective and realized that he probably sees the same thing as well, and with that it could be more likely for him to put his army to these four territories. So then rather I decided to go with this spot for my army, which covers these four territories with these four additional territories as well, but doesn't cover these upper seven territories. Also another spot which while I was in the game didn't really consider because if not predicting the stack right I would have had to do a lot of troop splits in order to capture a bunch of territories, was this territory which covers all of the territories except these four. So with all of these three best army spots if I'm thinking right, I had like 66% to correctly predict my opponent's stack. And whether surprisingly for you or not, Olive actually placed his army next to mine, which was very fortunate to me because as an attacker I was supposed to get a good attacker's advantage by being able to immediately blitz his troops. 
as my secondary option like said I was considering putting my troops to that territory, and with that I would have been only one territory behind which would have been very promising as well. So unless getting a bad blitz roll I would have won the game anyway. As you can see in my turn I ended up holding even two continents, so there was no way for Olive to make a comeback. I won going first, so I get one point. What a promising way to start the competition. For the second game Olive decided to choose Konigsberg map with world domination. To which I had made the disconnection sheet as well which was publicly available in my Discord server. So no advantage for any of us when it comes to that, but since that was the map for the last 1v1 tourney finals Olive was probably practicing a lot on this map while I not so much. Obviously as his first territory pick he selected the better territory in the two territory continent forcing me to pick the worse one. And then he selected the most disconnected territory of the map. In that continent there were only two other territories which with one of them being a very connected border which could really block you the way, so because of that I decided to go with another border of that continent, so I wouldn't be forced to choose that mentioned very connected border. Then Olive went with the most disconnected territory in that continent, I decided to select the second most disconnected territory in it. He then went with the most disconnected territory in that continent, so I went with the second most disconnected territory in it, but honestly it wouldn't have matter which one of these territories is left for me to choose, so I should have rather go on of selecting the most disconnected territory in some another continent. Anyway, then Olive went with the most disconnected territory in that continent, while I for the second most disconnected one again. And then the same thing happened when it comes to this continent as well, and then with this continent as well. But then with my opponent selecting this territory, all of the rest territories in that continent were bad, so I went with this good territory in this continent next to the edge, and with my opponent selecting this territory I went with this territory next to the edge while my opponent then selected another good territory in the same continent. We continued picking the territories and with me seeing that it would be unlikely to add my army to one of the corners, I was planning to add my army to the center so more or less I would be able to access anything, so my strategy was to avoid picking the territories next to that center continent, but my opponent obviously knew the worst territories of the map too. So I realized that I was put into a very rough situation, I knew that if put my troops in the center continent, then my opponent probably more than likely would be able access and crush my army. So I decided to rather put my army to that territory instead, hoping that my opponent might decide to put his biggest army to one of these territories. But he didn't, and with my army not being unblocked, I was able just to capture a few territories with it, and my new troops weren't enough to do anything against my opponent's big advantage he has gotten. So I thought what I should have done instead. And I was thinking what if I had done the troop split in two armies in the pre-game's troop deployment phase, but I think then one half would have been easily crushed by my opponent with him getting a very good attacker's advantage, and another half would have stayed blocked, so might have been even worse. So what my opponent said after the game is that I should have placed my army in the middle like I initially thought and expect him to get a bad blitz rule. And I have to agree with him, that would have probably been the best decision to what I could currently think of, but do you have anything better in mind, let me know. Anyway, Olive won going first, so he gets one point, the result becomes 1-1 so we are currently in a draw. For the third map I decided to choose Lunar Mining Facility with Capital Conquest, these were the settings I made a novice to Grandmaster run like half a year ago, so I was just playing without blizzards back then, while for all of it's a new map. Though while I have much more experience on it, Olive is the one who is going first, and the advantage for the first player is tremendous in this map. Olive selected this territory as his first pick so to probably be his capital pick which I didn't really care about because while this territory is a much better capital place than the most of territories, I would say it's much worse than one of these territories. Especially this one, that territory is my most favorite capital place on the map, though I didn't select it immediately so to not make it obvious for Olive. 
but then by seeing that Olive is not actually going for the one border continent with that blizzard being here, I decided to select the inner border territory of that continent, and the outer border territory of that continent. So that continent would belong to me, and Olive couldn't place his capital on the outer border, which later on I will realize it was a very big mistake for me to select that territory and make my capital blocked, because in this map as the second layer if you're playing with decent player, then you will have to rely on the capital's blitz, so if you will leave your capital in a blocked place having its troops blocked, then you won't be able to use your capital's troops on blitzing your opponent. So that was very unfortunate that I didn't realize my mistake immediately and still decided to pick my capital there instead of selecting it on the outer border, or placing my capital in the territory which I like the most, and to which I was originally selecting my territories, so I would easily get that continent and have a lot of territories in a row to capture. I think I should have different chose this territory as many capital, as by not doing so I left that continent to be very easily, and with me letting my opponent select a bunch of territories in the Rowan Space Gate, I created him a perfect opportunity with his capital placement to potentially end up holding some continents. Luckily enough I was able to break through them with getting an extremely lucky 8 versus 5 blitz roll which only cost me one troop. But then my mistake was to not capture the one border continent immediately, that might have been my last chance to make a comeback but I was afraid that my opponent could potentially try blitzing my capital if I leave it very weak and since his army was unleashed towards me so I didn't, but that was a very big mistake that I made. With me not managing to break through Olive's continent, that led him of taking a big advantage over me with him every turn getting stronger and stronger and more harder to get invaded. So my last hope was to win by the capital's blitz, so after trading an A set I tried manual rolling Olive's capital but I wasn't successful at all and lost, so you can really see why it was such a big mistake to make my capital block in the territory's picking stage, as if I had those troops unleashed, then I would have either had way much better odds to blitz my opponent's capital, or with him being afraid that I could blitz it he would been paying his attention to keep it safer and wouldn't have been expanding that much drastically. Olive wins this game going first, so he gets one point. The result becomes 1-2 with Olive being in the lead now. For the fourth Olive decided to pick Jewel Vern's mysterious island with world domination. And this was the map I never played on, and to which I didn't have made the Disconnection Territories map sheet either but wasn't too big of a problem because even without it you could still try figuring out the best territories by yourself. So first of all what I saw is that in this big continent with these blizzards only one territory was good, it was this dead end territory while all other territories in this continent were borders. Olive then followed with that territory in the three territory continent which I assume must be the best in it. And then I followed with a territory which I considered being the best in that continent. And then Olive selected the most disconnected territory in that continent. And then my attention went to this four territories continent, and specifically to these two territories, I was making my next choice between of them. And I went with this one, to which my opponent responded with oops, and my guess it's because I probably selected the more connected territory, but I prioritize picking that territory is because it wouldn't block me as much important way as it blocks the territory which I left to my opponent. But let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section down below. Anyway, then I went with this territory because it was the one next to the edge with that blizzard being there. Anyway we continued picking territories and with doing that my biggest goal was to be accessible towards all of my opponent's territories in the map with me, putting my troops to one big army. And I think I did pretty good, because I ended up of having 50% chance of putting my army to the place in which would be accessible to crush my opponent's army. I had to either put my army to this territory and cover all of these territories, or to add my army to this territory and cover all of these territories and I decided to go with the latter option. And surprise surprise but my opponent's army was actually put next to mine, 
so I was able to immediately blitz it supposing to get a good attacker's advantage, and then with the rest of the troops to invade my opponent into the continent which I let him get in the territories picking stage and then with the rest of the troops to capture as many territories as possible. In my second turn I ended up receiving even 7 troops and with that the game from my opponent was over, as in his second turn he only got 4 of them, so that was way too big of a difference for my opponent to do something with him not having any troops left from before. The mistake which I made in the territories picking stage which my opponent after the game pointed out to me is that I let him get the continent in the territories picking stage, as with that I had to successfully blitz his army, then to fortify off 3 and then to capture two territories to stop him from winning the game. So the game might not have gone as successfully if I had gotten a worse blitz roll when crushing his army. Anyway, I won going first which gives me one point. The result after four games becomes 2-2. It's a draw again. For the fifth game I wanted to pick another map which could be not familiar to all of since I don't recall it being it neither in the 1v1 tournaments nor being mentioned publicly as the grinding settings. It's King Dynasty with Capital Conquest. But after I revealed my pick Olive responded to it that it's a good choice and that he played on it a few times. So that was a bit bad because I do not have much experience on it and all I did is only made the territories disconnection sheet and played a few games with myself. Olive selected this territory as his first pick so I assumed it was going to be his capital pick. And then when I was playing a few games with myself, I found that these two territories to be one of the best capital spots and since I wanted that our capitals would be connected with each other I decided to rather choose this territory. And this is how our setup looked at the end. With our initial first territory picks probably that's nothing too surprising. As you can see Olive in his turn captured a bunch of territories to reduce my territorial troop bonus, and at the same time prioritizing to capture some continents so they would make me do some troop splits. So I had to invade those continents and capture a lot of territories, too. And I would have been in as good position as Olive if I hadn't lost a ton of troops there. As you can see at the end of my turn I ended up having quite fewer troops than Olive which was very big disadvantage for me to have chances to make a comeback. And then in the second turn I've got a very unfortunate blitz roll over here also. Olive then in the third turn captured a lot of stuff again and I knew that my last chance in this position was to try winning by the capitals takedown. So this what I've gone for. As you saw the 10 vs 10 was 0% success chance, so I went with doing manual rolls to potentially increase my chance. And the manual rolls went pretty good I ended up even having 57% chance to blitz my opponent's capital successfully but the unfortunately the blitz roll went unsuccessfully. And with Olive winning going first he gets another point and the result becomes 2-3 with Grandmaster Olive XA being in lead and with only one final game being left. And for the last game Olive decided to select his favorite 1v1 map with Capital Conquest which is Brazil. It's the map which he used to get to the first place on the Risk leaderboard. And this map with Capital Conquest is one of my favorites too, it's the map in which I felt the strongest in the 1v1 Autumn Tournament of 2021. So what a great map to end the series. If I were going second of course, as in that case with one of us winning that would have concluded the series, while now if I win, then it will be a draw so we will have to play a tiebreaker game, but if Olive wins, then obviously he wins the whole competition. So I must win this game as otherwise I go home. And in this map usually the best capital pick is this territory, though the blizzards could sometimes change that and make even greater place for it. So I was trying to look and see if it was a better place elsewhere, but it didn't really look like, so I went with this territory. To which my opponent followed with this territory, which I didn't really expect him to be the capital's place because it's a very weird territory but remembering the last Brazil game with GM Risky Phil I knew that I should expect anything, so I knew that I should avoid blocking my capital's way towards these continents with blizzards. And maybe that's why my opponent selected that territory, as it's the most and only very disconnected territory in that continent, 
but to not necessarily be his capital place. I wasn't really sure where he is going to put his capital to. I thought that my opponent might have a few different capital spots in mind depending on the way I select my territories. But as mentioned I was trying not to become blocked from these continents with blizzards looking from my capital spot. And this is how our setup looked at the end. I decided to place my army into this territory because my main focus was to capture this continent as soon as possible and with properly guarding it to start getting continental troop bonuses as fast as possible. Though Olaf decided to put his capital to that spot which kinda ruined my plan, because with me invading him into his continent I would always unleash the way for him to invade my continent as well, so I decided to add my newly gotten troops to that territory to be ready to invade my opponent from that side. But I should have captured that territory and from my biggest army fortify some more troops to that territory because with the newly gotten troops my opponent has gotten, he was able to simply crush my troops getting a very favorable blitz roll as the attacker. Then the second turn went with me invading my opponent to his continent and recapturing my continents. And my opponent just did the same. So I knew that the game will probably be lost for me if I do nothing, because eventually my opponent is supposed to have the advantage over me with him getting more troops from the sets. So I knew that if I don't make my opponent waste troops then the game will either go into the way of favoring him or at the best case scenario just being in the draw position, and getting the draw for me would lose the competition with all of being one point ahead. So I had to come with some ways to make my opponent to waste his troops. As let me put that in this way. Imagine that I have 10 troops more on my capital than my opponent does, with me having 20 troops and my opponent 10. In this case I have double the troops than my opponent, but if I have 30 troops while my opponent 20, then I have just a third more troops than my opponent, and then if I have 40 troops while my opponent 30, then in that case I only have a quarter more troops than my opponent on his capital, and it goes on, with my odds to successfully blitz my opponent's capital getting lower and lower, and not only because of that but because he would get more troops from the sets as well. And I think that was the turn in which I made my opponent to waste a lot of troops, especially with him not getting very favorable blitz rules. So everything combined with me having a set at 3 cards let me end up having double the amount of troops than my opponent in our capital armies, and with that I even got 81% chance blitz roll to successfully take down my opponent's capital which I've taken and successfully won. So I don't have to go home. At least not yet. As evening out the result we have to play the tiebreaker game. And for the tiebreaker game I decided to select New Zealand with Australia with the game mode being world domination. These were the settings and the map with which Olive had to play in the 1v1 tournament final games, but I thought I was quite decent at these settings too. As his first territory pick Olive selected this territory which I consider being the best on the map as in this three territory continent the two other territories are borders, so if you select it then your opponent as the second layer will be forced to eventually select one of these two borders. While I myself decided to go with the most disconnected territory of the map to which my opponent responded with oops. And this is because I assume that with my opponent selecting the less connected border, he forced me to select the more connected border. But I mean both of these border territories are kinda bad, and there are even much more connected territories in the map looking to the territory's disconnection sheet, so after all if I selected the less disconnected border as my first territory pick, then after all I think I could have still been forced to select the second one who is more connected as well, over picking some very big number connected territory. So I'm not necessarily agree with my opponent at this case, I think that could be very hard to evaluate, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section down below. This is how our territory setup looked at the end. And I saw these two territories as my potential army placing choices. But then trying to look from my opponent's perspective I realized that this territory would probably be the best spot for his troops army and it's very likely that he is going to place his army there. So then I noticed this territory which was a very great army placing choice as well, though with my opponent placing his army in this territory he would be only one territory behind my army. 
but with that in other territory even covering two of my potential army placing spots, I thought most likely my opponent will go with this territory. And I was absolutely right. So that was a total in your face moment from my opponent. My opponent then captured some territories leaving his army to where it is without unleashing me the way towards his army. And then I did exactly the same. Well almost the same, I captured one territory fewer leaving my opponent at 15 territories, so he ended up receiving one troop more than me and that was a mistake. And in the second turn my opponent went of capturing a bunch of territories and with that unleashing me the way towards his biggest army. And I went to crush it getting just a slight attacker's advantage of losing two troops fewer, and then obviously continued capturing territories as not to only decrease his territorial troop bonus but obviously to invade him into all of his captured continents too. My opponent then in the third turn continued capturing territories to decrease my territorial troop bonus, and obviously I tried to recapture as many territories as possible as well. And at the end of my turn I realized that I'm taking the advantage over my opponent, as while the last turn I ended with having 19 territories, this one with even 21. But very luckily for my opponent he had a set at 3 cards which was about to ruin my plans. But surprise surprise I had a set at 3 cards as well. At the end of my turn having 20 territories or 1 territory fewer from the last time but with even 3 continents. I then fortified my two troops to that territory but that was a mistake, I think the best territory for these two troops would have been this one. So unfortunately my opponent managed to break through all of my continents. But that was still promising to me because at the end of my turn I ended up with one territory more in comparison with the previous turn. And then in the following turn with even two more territories or 23 of them in total, so I was definitely taking a big advantage over my opponent. And I thought I was about to win the game but my opponent was extremely lucky to get a set at 3 cards twice in a row. While myself I didn't get one. And my opponent at the end of my turn ended up holding one continent which gave a very big advantage to him. And then I didn't even have a set at 4 cards, so that was a GG. Trading an a set at 5 cards I still tried to do something but realized that I won't invade all of the continents anyway, so to not waste time I just surrendered. And here we are, after the tiebreaker game the result becomes 3-4 with GM Olive XC winning the whole competition. He is officially winner and proved himself well to be called one of the top leaderboard players. And I'm very thankful to him for all of the advice he has given to me after each of the games. All of the applauses go to all of cross country. I had a very great time playing with him. Now if you're interested in seeing more 1v1 competitions, then click on the playlist on the right. Or if you're looking for 1v1 tips and tricks videos, then click on the playlist on the left. Currently risk is such an undiscovered field, so basically anyone could become one of the top players if putting enough dedicated efforts and practice. Will you become one of them too?